Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, send it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. As you make your travel plans for the holiday season, remember johnnydollarair.com. johnnydollarair.com is a Priceline affiliate, so you get all the benefits of going through Priceline, such as being able to name your own price on hotels, rental cars, airline tickets, and even more, or being able to choose from great published fares, but at no additional cost to you. A portion of your uh, purchase goes to support the great detectives of old time radio. So remember, when uh, making travel plans, check johnnydollarair.com first. All right, now from October the 25th of 1959, here is uh, today's episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, The Missing Missile Matter. It's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Well, hiya, George. I've been wondering when you were going to come up with another wild one for me. That is not the case this time, John. John? Tell me, how is your, um... Uh, well, have you had a security clearance lately? Well, sure, in connection with that rocket fuel case I handled. Good. But, uh, now, what's this all about? Well, I can hardly discuss it with you over the phone. Oh, top secret, huh? Top secret. And of tremendous importance. Okay, George. I'll run over and see you. <laughs> CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. If you're smoking more today, but enjoying it less, try Camels. More people smoke Camels than any other cigarette, any filter, any king, any regular. The Camel blend of costly tobaccos has never been equal for rich flavor and easygoing mildness. The best tobacco makes the best smoke. Have a real cigarette, a real cigarette, a real cigarette, a camel. And now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Floyd's of England, North American office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the missing missile matter. When George Reed starts calling me John, well, it must be pretty important. So, expense account item one a buck and a quarter for a taxi over to the square on the office of Floyd's of England. We'll use this rather isolated office in the back so as not to be disturbed. Yeah, okay. Or overheard. Now, if I seem to be somewhat vague about this whole thing, I assure you it's only because of my own rather limited knowledge of... Well, well, sit down, John. Ah, yeah. Well, you can hardly expect me to investigate something unless I know what it's all about. Well, John... Out on the West Coast... Oh, they... come off this John stuff, will you? I'm sorry, uh, Johnny. But, now listen. Yeah, shoot. Sure. Out near Los Angeles, in North Hollywood to be exact, is a small plant that operates as the Smithwick 
paint remover company. What's so all fired mysterious about that? Not one drop of anything even faintly resembling paint remover has ever been put out by them. Huh? Actually, that name is only a blind, a cover-up. Yeah? For what? An outfit that might better be called the Smithwick Missile Development Company. Mm, Government stuff, huh? Johnny, they have no official connection with our government whatsoever. But unofficially? That's the sort of question we never ask. So far as anyone knows, our government simply doesn't recognize them, gives them no support, financial or otherwise. So far as anyone knows. Which means they receive no protection from Uncle Sam either. So Floyd's of England writes the insurance. Precisely. Under orders from our top brass. Well, what's happened out there? What's the trouble? Johnny, it appears from what Smithwick told me on the phone that one of their missiles is missing. Oh, well then. What? Yes. Oh, now look, George, I heard of a guy who mislaid a bass drum once and somebody who had an element stolen. Johnny. One of those missiles? Oh, wait. Hey, maybe he was talking about one that got lost in outer space. But then why send for me? They have nothing whatsoever to do with the firing of those things. But aren't you... A small plant out there, did you say? Yes. Oh, then it simply doesn't make sense. Now, George, Johnny, you... all I know is what Dr. Smithwick told me over the phone. I agreed to have you go out there immediately. He'll be waiting for you there whenever you get there. Well? Okay, George, whatever you say. <laughs> Amigo, you want to know about stereo phonographs? Listen to my last bullfight on ordinary stereo. Ole! But now, Colombia Stereo One. Ah, there is a corrida de toros. Real life like Magnifica. There is such a big difference in stereo phonographs. With most, all you get is a couple of speakers shooting in different directions. But with Colombia, ah, hombre, you get fantastic stereo projection. What it does is to send circles of sound sweeping through every inch of a room. You are surrounded with live sound, live feeling, live passion. Ole, ole! How they cheered me. Ask your Columbia phonograph dealer to demonstrate stereo one by Columbia. Prices start as low as $39.95 for portables, $129.95 for consoles. El Picador! Who let that bull out? And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Missing Missile Matter. Expense account item two, eight dollars for a plane to New York. Item three, 176 and a quarter for a 707 to Los Angeles. I arrived about 6 p.m. Pacific time. Item four, $50 deposit on a rental car, and I drove to North Hollywood to the so-called Smithwick Paint Remover Company. As I walked into the reception room at the front, a good-looking blonde hurriedly closed the door in back of her that led to a huge room full of desks and drawing boards, but no people. Yes, sir. Oh, my name is Dollar, Johnny Dollar, and I'm here. Johnny Dollar, the insurance investigator, for his sake. Uh, my name's Gloria, Johnny. Gloria Snowden. Miss Snowden? Well, you just call me Gloria, huh? Why not? But look, I've come to see Dr. Smithwick. He... Oh, that's too bad, Johnny. He isn't here. Is what? Well, he left very suddenly late this morning for Washington or someplace, I guess. Oh, now, that's funny. After asking he asked to be me to be sure and stay here until you came, and... Gee, you know, I didn't think it was really going to be you, Johnny. He just said Mr. Dollar would be arriving, and I... But anyhow, when he makes these sudden trips, he's always back here first thing in the morning, and I'm sure he wants to see you. So am I. Funny, though. What? What, Johnny? Well, I suppose I'd better get something to eat and find myself a place to sleep. Oh, gee, I'm hungry, too. And it's all your fault, Johnny, because I had to wait around for you. <laughs> well, then the least I can do is take you out to dinner, okay? Oh, gee, yeah. And I'm, uh, 
I'm free all evening, too, John. Great. We'll do the town. <laughs> now, is there a hotel or a motel around here where I can hang my hat? Well, gee, I, I, I don't... Well, there's the Paradise Motel over on North Sherman Way. It's kind of a smallish place. Oh, North Sherman Way. 1131. Then just let me drop off my luggage, shower and shave, and I'll pick you up. Where do you live, Gloria? Oh, I'll just wait here for you. I have a couple of things I ought to do before I leave. Okay, whatever you say. And you don't mind uh, taking me to dinner, I mean? Are you kidding? Funny. All this big emergency, all this hurry. The man who'd sent for me was off somewhere else. I should have asked for directions because it was over half an hour before I finally found the Paradise Motel. It was hardly the place I would have picked, but... Oh, well. Yeah, there you are, Mr. Dollar. Number seven. Okay. This be satisfactory? Yeah, yeah, sure. Because uh, if it ain't, I got other vacancies. No, no, this will be all right. Uh-huh. Uh, anything you want, I'll uh, I'll be in the office. Well, I could uh, sure use a few ice cubes. Oh, brought your own jug, huh? <laughs> Have them for you in the jiffy. Good. Uh, now, let's see. Uh, shirts will go in here, I guess. Huh? <laughs> That's about the fastest service I ever heard of. Must be certainly no waste any... Hmm? Hello? Somebody out here looking for... Oh. Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Welcome, recording star Mel Torme. It's terrible trying to sing with a bad cold. So I always take four-way cold tablets to relieve cold miseries fast. Good idea. Tests of all the leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting. Four-way starts in minutes to relieve muscular pains, headache, reduce fever, calm upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. When you catch cold, try my way. Take four-way cold tablets. Fast way to relieve cold distress and feel better quickly. Four way, only 29 cents. Now, here's a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. To get rid of embarrassing dandruff in three minutes, change to Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Three minutes of Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep unsightly dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair, rub in one minute. Add water, lather one minute. Then rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch and embarrassing dandruff's gone. At the same time, Fitch can brighten hair up to 35%. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today. And now, Act Three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Dollar. What was that noise? I... Well, you... You've been hurt? Then that was shots I heard. Mr. Dollar? <sighs> Whoever fired him was a pretty lousy shot, thank heaven. Oh, uh, then you're okay? You mean he missed you? Oh, how do you know that wasn't just a backfire you heard? Backfire? Yeah, from some passing car. Well, don't you tell me that is any backfire. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He, did you say? Well, yeah. Well, did you see him? Get a look at him. Oh, no. I was in back at the ice machine. We could have gone into the office to look up my room number. I heard the noise and that car pulling away, and I just come running. Yeah, that car must have been waiting around the other side of this motel. Now, look, mister, what'd you say your name is? Barnwell. Jed Barnwell. And, Mr. Dollar, I'm going to call the police. No, don't. Huh? Well, now, I realize you're a special investigator, some kind of... That's right. And I don't want you to call the police in on this. Not yet. But now, look... That's an order. You you got the authority? Not only that, but... Look, I want to rent another room from you. Oh, you mean you'll uh, you'll pay for both of them? That's right. You have another vacancy? 
hope you want the truth. You're the only guest I got tonight. I can understand that. So you take care of whichever unit you want, and I'll sign you into it. No, just let my name appear on the register for this one. Then you toddle off to bed and forget about me. Well, uh... Oh, and here. Here's a five spot for getting me the key to the one next door, number eight. Uh, oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Whatever you say, Mr. Dollar. And, uh, you uh, still want them ice cubes? Brother, I sure do. I left one handbag and its contents in number seven. Then I sat quietly in the darkness of my own room and waited. But I suddenly remembered my dinner date with Gloria Snowden, so I jumped into my car and drove back to the missile development plant. The place was dark. I drove to a corner drugstore to a phone booth and looked for Gloria's name in the directory. It wasn't. So, back to the motel. In number seven, the room registered to my name. The door was still locked. I went back to number eight and sat there trying to think this thing out. Huh? I doused the light, pulled my gun out of the holster and sneaked quietly to one side of the door frame. Mr. Dollar? Mr. Dollar, I saw your light go out. I hate to disturb you at this time of night. Yeah? Who is it? Uh, my name's Bob McKinney. McKinney? That's right. That sounds familiar. Well, I used to work for CBS Radio, and, um, well, I used to handle that program dramatizing your insurance case. Oh. Uh, I, I want to talk to you. It's important. All right. Come in, Bob. Hey, what's in that box? It's a tape recorder. Kind of a special one. When old Jed Barnwell, he's a kind of a gabby old guy. Yeah, he sure is. Well, when he told me you were staying here, well, Johnny, I figured I'd better get to you and tell you about that. About what? About the code signals I have here on tape. I picked them up about an hour ago. Morse code signals? Yeah, international code. It's like this, Johnny. I have my own amateur license, uh, W6VFG, and I fool around with a lot of high-frequency experiments. So? Well, I got a couple of wires crossed on my receiver. It took me to a frequency that isn't even supposed to be on the air anywhere. Yeah? I started hearing what I thought was a high whistle. And so I it was barely audible, like uh, like an oscillator note, a continuous uh, squeal. Only it broke off now and then. Well, now, Bob, in spite of finding a key myself a long time ago, I'm, I'm afraid this is a little well, outside wait, Johnny. my... I've also been experimenting with this tape recorder, running the tape and recording at about five feet a second instead of seven and a half inches a second. Yeah, well, uh, no, no, it's excuse me, but listen, please. Okay, okay. I recorded that squeak, running the tape real fast, and then I played it back slowly. You know what it was, Johnny? All right. It was ultra high speed transmission, code transmission. Oh. And when I played it back as slowly as I could, so I could read it, will, will you listen to it? I've got a variable speed on this. Can you read international code? Go ahead, Bob. Turn it on. Yeah. Oh, oh. you have to slow it down a bit? Maybe by home it's messed on the reel. Wait a minute. Listen to that. That's what I mean, Johnny. It's legitimate code, all right, only... Well, have you any idea what language that is? I certainly have. Well, what? Whatever that message is. Well, it wasn't intended for anybody this side of the Iron Curtain. And d did you understand just, well, maybe a couple of words? Yeah. Now, look, have you any way of telling where that signal comes from? Well, it was mighty powerful, like it was real near, nearby. Ultra high speed transmission. And on a frequency that nobody in the world is supposed to be using. Bob, if there was some way to spot that transmitter, if we could only. Kenny McManus. What? If I can rig that direction finder at Kenny's to my receiver when it's rigged to catch a signal. Then do it. Get hold of McManus and his direction finder and trace down the source of that signal. Meantime, leave this tape recorder with me. I'm going to round me up an interpreter. Then, then you caught those two familiar words in that message. My name. That's right, they were. Johnny Dollar. Act four of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. 
And now, here's a message from the watchmakers of Switzerland. Swiss vacation! What do you know? Swiss vacation! Win a fabulous vacation for two in beautiful Switzerland. Enter the Swiss vacation contest. It's easy. Nothing to buy. Pick up a free entry blank at a jewelry store or other store that sells quality watches. Then in 25 words or less, complete this statement. A quality watch is the best value because there are 1,000 prizes. First prize, a 21-day vacation for two in Switzerland. You fly deluxe Swiss Air both ways. Visit many colorful places. All expenses paid for two people plus $500 extra spending money. Second, third, and fourth prizes. 15-day Swiss vacations for two. Also, four mink stoles, eight Bolex movie cameras and projectors, 12 Hermes typewriters, 160 $100 watches, 812 gala assortments of Tobler Swiss chocolates. Enter the Swiss vacation contest today. Free entry blanks at your jewelry store. And now, act four of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> familiar words and that high-speed code message that Bob McKenney had intercepted. So high-speed it sounded like a continuous squeal until we played back the recording slowly and recognized it for what it really was. A secret message in that foreign language. Those two words were my own name, Johnny Dollar. My one good police contact there on the West Coast was Lieutenant Harry Golden of the Homicide Squad. Sure, it was out of his line, it was the middle of the night... But he rounded up Alan Orloff, an interpreter, and sent him over to see me. It was nearly 8 a.m. by the time I transcribed the code message. And then when Orloff finished translating it. Mr. Dollar, do you see what this means? I certainly do, Orloff. But not only the threat against you, sir, because you had work on this very case. I know, I know. But the sender of this message has somehow got hold of secret plans for a missile, a space rock. Orloff. Has copied those plans, is holding them for an agent of this, uh, this other government to pick them up later on today. Which means that somehow I've got to locate the sender of that message. But how? Uh, and it must be done immediately before the contact with this other agent. I know, I know. Then don't you see, Mr. Doc? Wait, wait. Yeah, who was it? Bob McKinney. Oh, Bob. What'd you find out? Johnny, that secret transmitter is right here in North Hollywood. It's been working ever since I talked with you up until just about an hour ago. Here. Here's the address and the name of the person who owns the house. Good. Only the antenna must be set up in the attic or something. What do you mean? There's no outside antenna to show there's a transmitter working there. And, of course, using that frequency that nobody would ordinarily be able to pick up. It hadn't been for my dumb luck in receiving an ultra-high-speed transmission. Did you record any further messages? I got them right here on tape, on this recorder. Good. And while you transcribe them so Mr. Orloff can translate them, I'm going to the address you have on this. Huh? Kind of figured the name of that sender might surprise you. Surprise, huh? That is the understatement of the week. I'm going over to that missile development outfit. And I hope and pray Dr. Smithwick is there now. So perhaps I was wrong, Mr. Dollar. After all, I'm a scientist, not a file clerk. But I was certain the plans for that missile were missing from the vault just before I was hurriedly called to Washington. Dr. Smithwick, but contrary to our usual policy... I asked the government to send some men here to investigate. They'll probably arrive here shortly. Doctor. Yet now on my return, I find the plans intact in their proper place. Oh, those plans were stolen, all right. And for the benefit of one of the big foreign powers. What? But that... That could only mean that someone here in this organization... Right. Do you mind if I call in your receptionist? Gloria Snowden. I want her in on what I have to say. You mean to say you tell that stupid little girl about this? You think I need to? Well, Dollar, it's because of her lack of intelligence that it's safe to have her about. Any bets? 
Gloria. Yes, Johnny? Come in here, please. Gee, sure. Hi, Doctor. Now, Mr. Dollar. Doctor, Gloria was the only one beside yourself who knew I was out here. Who could have arranged or carried out the attack on me last night. Attack? More important, she's the last one you'd suspect of being able to gain access to your vault. Of taking the plans, having them copied, and preparing to turn them over to a... Well, it sounds corny, but... To a foreign agent. Are you serious? Whatever you mean by that. However, having intercepted a radio message sent out from a transmitter hidden away in her home... Well, this doctor is a slowed-down, intelligible tape recording of that message. Well, I, uh, I don't know what... Well, Gloria, or whatever your real name is... Very well, Dollar. And, of course, neither of you gentlemen can be allowed to leave this office. Gloria, that, that gun... That's right. Any famous last words, Dollar? You... You know, Gloria, this tape recording is the only real evidence I have against you. What? So what? So here. Maybe you'd like to have it. Oh, no, you... Mr. Dollar. Yeah, Doctor. And maybe those G-men you sent for will keep the date she made with her contact. The one supposed to pick up those plans from her. The government boys were more than glad to take over. And I hope they can find some way to reward Bob McKinney, who really solved this case. Expense account total, including the trip back to... Ah, wait a minute. Forget it. In so good a cause, it was the least I could do. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment. Constipation is something people don't talk about much. But it can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Well, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, as close to natural acting as possible, and a medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Now, X-Lax has been popular with many doctors and millions of people over the years because pleasant-tasting chocolate at X-Lax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. X-Lax is gentle. Next morning, it gives you the closest thing to natural action. And that's why many doctors and millions of people use X-Lax with complete confidence. X-Lax. The laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity gently, overnight. Is X-Lax in your medicine cabinet? Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, the most beautiful and dangerous girl I've ever known. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Starring Bob Bailey originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, G. Stanley Jones, Horace Lewis, Harry Bartell, Don Diamond, and Bartlett Robinson. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverly speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network, and this is Radio 59 WROW. This is Andrea J. Graham, author of the Web Surface series. Oh. 
and I'm Adam's wife. You're listening to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. Welcome back. Well, a very interesting episode for both the commercials and for the plot of the show. It's great to hear a uh, Cold War plot and uh, a case with a bit of national security and intrigue thrown in. It would be a really surprising revelation that uh, the receptionist was actually behind this whole uh, case, if not for the fact that we're only given two people to suspect. <laughs> If we were given um, more suspects, I think we would be genuinely surprised that the uh, perpetrator turned out to be my friend Irma the Super Spy. And the story does show in a kind of subtle way how our uh, own prejudices and assumptions can uh, uh, create a lot of danger. The story is interesting, but... uh, one thing I, I do find curious about it is the Morse code uh, clue and Johnny recognizing his own name in Morse code, but the rest of it being in a foreign language that needs translated, and the implication being that it's a language used behind the Iron Curtain, which would be uh, Russian. The problem with Russian is that it uses an entirely different alphabet, the Cyrillic alphabet, which uh, has its own Morse code. So Johnny would have to uh, know how his name is spelled in uh, Russian and what the Cyrillic uh, spelling of uh, Johnny Dollar is and how the... uh, Cyrillic spelling of Johnny Dollar is communicated in Russian North Code, a Morse code. Of course, it's possible, I suppose, that it was not Russian, but East Germans who were sending the message uh, in uh, German. I don't know, perhaps they sent it in German and just uh, did uh, Johnny Dollar in English. The commercials were really fun on this one. I couldn't help but thinking that uh, Who Let the Bulls Out was the uh, 1950s last musical version of Who Let the Dogs Out. And uh, that contest for that Swiss uh, watch company, I don't think I've ever heard a uh, sweepstakes with uh, better prizes for an essay. Now, of course, you do have, like, the Publisher's Clearinghouse and that sort of thing, but this one's uh, essentially a grown-up version of the kids' essay contest with some extremely fabulous prizes. If this were a current contest... I would be writing a lot about watches to try and get just the perfect essay. All right, well, now to listener comments and feedback. And we just have a comment from uh, Karen who says, Great fun listening to this old radio series. Uh, Thanks so much, Karen. Uh, That will actually be all for today. Join us back here tomorrow for Dragnet. And next Friday, another episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. And coming on Tuesday, The Private Files of Rex Saunders. In the meantime, send your comments to Box13 at GreatDetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. Oh, and become one of our...